Good evening. My name is Take, the guest relation manager of Intrigue Journey, and welcome back to our monthly webinar. In Spain, most of us are familiar with cities like Madrid, Barcelona, Andalusia, etc. But today, we're going to share with you a less private region in Spain, Galicia, Asturias, Cantabria, and Mask Country. We call them the Green or Northern Spain. So before we go into the webinar proper, allow me to do some housekeeping matters. All of you are muted in this session. However, there's a chat box at the bottom of the screen and you're more than welcome to type in your questions there. We will answer them at the end of the session. We also kindly ask you to help us do a three question survey before you lock out of the Zoom session. So without much further ado, I introduce you to the speaker for this evening, Ms. Cristina Gonzalez. Cristina is a native from Bilbao, Spain. She started her career in the tourism industry where she was the director assistant in Spain Tourism Board. So in 1999, she switched her career to education. That's where she is now a senior lecturer in the Center for Modern Languages in Nanyang Technological University, NTU, Singapore. So while she's teaching, she's also pursuing a PhD in applied linguistic to language teaching. Please join me to welcome Christina. Hi, Christina, or yours. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Tech, for this introduction and for the opportunity for this um, presentation of a part of Spain, my country, which is very close to my heart. Let me start by setting the presentation. Green Spain. This is the region or the area of the northern part of Spain we're going to be talking about today. It's the name given to a large natural area in northern Spain stretching along the Atlantic coast from the border with Portugal to the border with France. And the reason why it is called green Spain, it is because it's humid, rainy and temperate oceanic climate helps lush pastures and forests thrive. Here you get an idea, a visual idea of what is the region here. Let me get them. Laser pointer. This is the country of Spain. And we are going to talk about this, not the northern part of Spain, the so called green Spain. And we're going to be covering the regions of Galicia, the autonomous region of Galicia in the west, moving to the right to Asturias, then Cantabria, and finally, the Basque Country in the East. This is a land of natural contrasts that includes a 2,500 kilometer coastline, mountains, forests, natural parks, and more. Another Spain, far from stereotypes, an Atlantic Spain, a green land with a great diversity of landscapes, cultures, and people. Green Spain rests protected by its mountains, which invite lovers of active tourism to stroll through them and conquer its peaks. National parks, like the stunning Picos de Europa National Park in Asturias, and natural biosphere reserves, like the Somido Park, also in Asturias, or the spectacular wetlands of Urdaibai in the Basque Country, my region. This area offers a coastline with over 900 beaches and some of the most beautiful in the world, like this one, which is part of the protected national park of the Sears Islands in Galicia, declared natural heritage for its beauty, fauna, and flora. 
a coast dotted with natural monuments such as this one, San Juan de Gastelugache, Vizcaya, a hermitage nestled at the top of an islet connected to the coast by a staircase of incredible beauty. Maybe for some of you, this image may look familiar as it became quite famous after being the location to film various scenes of the series Games of Thrones. An area full of charming towns that preserves their authentic spirit and seafaring customs, such as this one in Asturias. An abandoned UNESCO cultural heritage examples. This landscape of unique beauty is also a meeting point for ancestral traditions and avant-garde trends as well as traditional sports born of the way of life and work carried out in the sea and on land. Competitions that continue to be celebrated today with fresh ingredients and produce brought from the coast, mountains and nearby vegetable gardens and natural artisan products. Regarding its gastronomical offer, the four regions that form Green Spain combine 51 Michelin star restaurants as of last December 2021, when the Michelin Guide Gala for Spain and Portugal took place in Valencia, in Spain. And what really is remarkable is that almost half of the restaurants with three Michelin stars in Spain, five of them, are in this area with the majority concentrated in the Basque Country. But before we start our route, I would like to give you a glimpse of this less popular part of Spain through a short video. Christina, I think the video is not playing. Okay.
I hope you get a global visual image of this region, Green Spain. Okay. So now, in this presentation, I suggest following this route from west to east, covering the four regions that make up Green Spain. To the left, Galicia, followed by Asturias, then Cantabria, and finally, Basque Country. Sorry, I have a problem with the presentation. Okay. In our first region, Galicia, we will be stopping at its capital city first, Santiago de Compostela, and the town of Monforte de Lemos. These two here. This route I am proposing coincides with the northern way of St. James from Santiago de Compostela in Galicia, all the way to San Sebastian in the Basque Country. The first stop in our route, Santiago de Compostela, is the final destination of St. James Way and the capital of Galicia. A must see and visit attraction here, obviously, it is its iconic cathedral which according to tradition is the place of the relics of James the Apostle discovered in the ninth century. The main altar is in the Baroque style and the crypt of St. James the Apostle lies directly beneath it here. This is a key work in the Romanist style in which numerous architectural styles converge. In this image, we can see La Gloria Portico the main entrance, which features 200 figures referring to the apocalypse and the figure of St. James, the apostle, appearing to welcome the pilgrims. Around its amazing cathedral, Santiago offers a UNESCO World Heritage Old Town Center full of charming squares and other historical buildings, like the Raxoi Palace, located right in front of the cathedral, in Plaza del Obradoiro, and the luxurious Parador de Santiago de Compostela, said to be the world's oldest hotel, right next to the cathedral. Beyond the winding streets and the stone mansions, the modern site of Santiago can be seen in two places, the Galician Contemporary Art Center whose terraces afford some of the best views of the historic quarter of the city, and Ciudad da Cultura by the New York architect, Peter Einzelman, one of the most surprising examples of Galicia contemporary architecture. And after strolling through Santiago, we traveled to the Ribera Sacra, a unique natural landscape with spectacular views and impressive canyons and cliffs, which has been recently, as of September 2021, designated UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. The Ribera Sacra includes 23 towns with historic sites, and Monforte de Lemos is its capital. Monforte is a spectacular old town with Jewish remains, several museums with artistic manifestations of interest, a beautiful medieval bridge that crosses the Cava River and a natural environment around worth enjoying. Ribera Sacra is also home to one of the largest concentrations, concentrations of Romanesque religious constructions in Europe. One of the monasteries recommended for a visit is the one in this picture, Santo Estevo de Rivas de Sil, completely renovated and turned into a Parador Hotel, which was declared a historical and artistic monument in 1923. 
Rivera Sacra is a wine region that dates back at least to Roman times and one of the five renowned wine regions in Galicia. Here you have a vision, a view of all the five regions. Its vineyards are planted on the steep slopes of the valleys and canyons of the Seal and Mino rivers. And sometimes the steeper vineyards can be tilted at 85 degrees, which only can be accessed along the waterways. Such is the effort required and the risk undertaking that Rivera Sacra has received the seal for heroic viticulture. Besides its wines, Galicia is also known for its delicious gastronomy, especially fish and seafood. Here you have some examples of its specialities like the Galician style octopus. And from Galicia, now we are moving towards our second region, towards the sea into the region of Asturias. In this region, we are going to talk about two of its main cities, Gijón and Oviedo, the capital, as well as the amazing Picos de Europa National Park. In Gijón, I recommend to start visiting Cima de Vila, which is the former fishing neighborhood with charming squares between small streets. Along the walk, you will see the Plaza Mayor, the town hall and a palace located opposite the marina. The visit can be completed with a walk along San Lorenzo Beach and seeing the Roman baths and the church of San Pedro that you can see in the image. The area is full of cider houses and restaurants where you can try the traditional local cuisine of Asturias, like its famous drink, cider. Here you have a picture of the most emblematic Asturian dish, an all-in-one stew of white beans, chorizo and morcilla, which is a Spanish version of black pudding. And from Gijón to Oviedo, there are about 100 kilometers, a journey that takes about an hour by car. A visit to the city would be incomplete without visiting the cathedral, which houses the Holy Chamber, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In Oviedo, it is worth to walk around the town hall square and see the 9th century Foncalada Fountain, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and the facade of the Campo Mor Theater here in the picture where the prestigious Princess of Asturias awards are presented. Oviedo is also included in UNESCO's World Heritage List for its collection of revered 9th century pre-Romanesque stone churches that can be found scattered throughout the city and in the, in the outskirts. A prominent one is Santa Maria de Naranco, set in a valley right above the city. And after visiting city sites, it is time now to move to nature with a trip to the Picos de Europa National Park that extends for almost 70,000 hectares over the regions of Asturias and Cantabria. It is Spain's biggest national park, and it is also part of the Cantabrian mountains, expanding from Galicia to the west, to the Basque Country, to the east. Along the way, I suggest visiting one of the most popular areas, the lakes of Covadonga, which are next to the town of Cangas de Nice. This is a day to enjoy the defining feature of green Spain, nature. The entire setting is stunning, and I recommend spending some time doing a bit of walking. The two main sites, the shrine and the lakes of Covadonga, Lake Enol and Lake Ursina, can be easily reached by car without any problem. If there is time to spare, then I suggest to go to one of the most popular viewing points in the national park for some spectacular views. This is a picture of the other lake, Lake Ursina. And from Picos de Europa National Park to our next region, Cantabria. They are around 130 kilometers in between, which takes about one and a half hours by car. And in here, we're gonna be looking at 
two places, towns, Santillana del Mar is Santander, its capital. Santillana del Mar is one of the most beautiful towns in Cantabria. This medieval town houses several historic buildings such as, such as its Collegiata, a Romanesque church and former Benedictine monastery. It's a real pleasure to get lost walking through its ancient streets. And a few kilometers away from Santillana, we can find the Altamira cave, a unique cave whose prehistoric paintings are considered among the most important in the world. The Neo Cave and the Altamira National Museum and Visitor Center in Santillana del Mar offer a tour that includes an extremely detailed reconstruction of the original cave to ensure the original Altamira cave is preserved. The paintings are some 14,000 years old and have the UNESCO World Heritage designation since 1985. Santiana del Mar is only 35 kilometers from Santander, our next stop. Santander is the capital city of the region of Cantabria and a medium-sized port city. An ancient city that in modern times has managed to create and integrate new spaces for art and encounters like the Botin Center, which houses contemporary works of art. I suggest walking along the elegant Bay of Santander, enjoying the contrast of the peaceful beach, the modern Botin Center, its buildings, and the penguin habitat in La Magdalena Marine Park by the beach. Variety is one of the main aspects that characterizes Cantabrian cuisine. In any of the city's restaurants, you can enjoy the best local products, no matter what you like, from fresh traditional anchovies to local cheeses, contemporary dishes, and of course, squid. You cannot leave Santander without trying a delicious portion of its star dish, breaded fried squid. And this can be done in a restaurant like this one, the only restaurant with three Michelin stars in Cantabria within a privileged architectural and natural environment nestled in a palatial house from the 18th century. And finally, we reach the Basque Country. From Santander to San Sebastian, there are about 200 kilometers, which with a journey by car taking around two hours. Um, in this region, we're gonna concentrate on two of its main town cities, San Sebastian first, and then we will finish with Bilbao, my hometown. Uh, what can I say about San Sebastian? This city, also known as Donostia, lies along a white sandy bay between two hills. It is beautifully designed, romantic city, best known for its food and artistic events, such as its International Film Festival in the modern Crusal building, Cinemalia, it's called, and International Jazz Festival, Jazzalia. An attractive feature of San Sebastian is its aquarium on the building called the Palace of the Sea inaugurated in 1928 and is the headquarters of the Oceanographic Society of Gipuzkoa. It's worth a visit to the fishing port, obviously, in this part of the city. It is recommended a visit to the Museum of San Telmo, a multidisciplinary center set in the old 16th century convent of San Telmo, situated in the oldest part of the city. The Museum San Telmo, the Peine del Viento, this sculpture translated the wind comb, which is the sculpture you can see here, and the crucial are examples of how the city brings together modern and traditional features. San Sebastian offers one of the finest examples of the Basque cuisine, especially its tradition of pinchos. 
pinches. Um, here you have some examples. Although you can find pinches everywhere in the Basque country, San Sebastian is the city that invented the pincho, a meal in miniature or like a Basque style individual portions of food, sometimes placed on a piece of bread, but not always. Like you can see some examples here. Something that I really recommend is to go to the city's old quarter to eat pinchos and enjoy the local wine. And from San Sebastian to Bilbao, it takes about an hour by car. It's all a highway. The cosmopolitan city of Bilbao, my hometown, is known among its inhabitants as, as the bocho, which means the whole whole because it is in the valley of the Nervion and Ibaizabal rivers, between two rivers, surrounded by mountains. The city is mainly divided into two areas by the Nervion River. To the left is the modern city and to the right, the old town. Obviously, we cannot talk about Bilbao without mentioning its most internationally known symbol, the Guggenheim Museum, Bilbao designed by the American architect, Frank Gehry. This avant-garde building is a magnificent place to display masterpieces of modern and contemporary art. Since its opening in 1997, this museum has become one of the must visit attractions of Bilbao. Even if you have no time to visit it inside, I recommend just strolling around outside the, the building. It's amazing. To the right one side of the river, we said, across the city, we can find the Rivera Market, famous for housing the most fresh and best produce of the region, housed in this building. In it, you can also enjoy having pinzos, besides buying fresh produce, in 1990, this market was recognized by the Guinness Book of Records as the largest covered market in Europe. And near here, you can find Bilbao's historic Old Quarter with its famous Seven Streets, which is made up of exactly seven streets, that's where the name comes from, and narrow alleys that connect them. Here you can see famous buildings that are all around these seven streets. We have two main, plaza means square, two main squares, a cathedral, some of the streets, churches, a public um, library, and a wonderful theater. It is a lively, thriving, and very interesting area to visit, filled with historical buildings like Plaza Nueva, which is the main square of the city, several churches and Santiago's Cathedral in this image, as well as its beautiful, amazing Arriaga Theater, which is an opera house built in new Baroque style in 1880, 90, sorry, inspired by the Paris Opera. I highly recommend to go for a stroll through the Casco Viejo, the old town, the oldest neighborhood in Bilbao, to immerse yourself into the sands and sounds of this amazing historical, artistic and bustling area of the city. Here I've included some of my personal, most personal pictures, um, examples of a bar with pinchos and here, I am with some friends from Spain and from Estonia visiting Bilbao. And this is my presentation here with this. I like to complete, I finish talking about the green Spain. <laughs>